I have a fun job today. I've been asked to take a look at some shots gathered on the Lumix S5 II camera and get a feel for how these shots behave here inside of Resolve and show you how I would work with this material as a professional colorist. So lots to talk about. Let's dive right into Resolve here and take a look at these shots. So I've got this timeline of three of these shots gathered on the Lumix. And thus far, I haven't done anything at all. I'm just looking at the original V-log images here in this timeline. All I've really done is I've set up my template node graph, which as you can see, isn't doing anything. This is just a structure for me to operate within when I begin grading in just a moment. But before I do that, there's a couple of important steps that I need to take first. The first of those is I wanna set up my overall color management, which is just going to transform what my camera saw into what my display can show on an automatic basis and using good color science. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our project settings under our file menu here, and I'm gonna to go to color management, and for my color science, I'm gonna flip from DaVinci YRGB to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. Next, I'm gonna turn automatic color management off so that I can go to a custom color processing mode. Input color space is gonna be Panasonic V Gamut VLog because that's the color space of all these shots down here. Timeline color space is going to be DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. That's a great big working color space that's really well suited to whatever material you happen to be grading. Timeline working luminance, I'm gonna to set to custom 10,000 so that I've got maximum dynamic range when I'm grading. Output color space is gonna be Rec 709 Gamma, gamma 24 because that's what my uh, reference monitor is set to. My input DRT, I'm gonna to set to none. And output DRT, I could leave at DaVinci, but I prefer what I get with luminance mapping, so I'm gonna set this accordingly. Now watch what happens to the image when I hit save here. Hey, look at that. We got some contrast, we got some color going on. We have a normalized image for our display where before we had a completely flat, completely desaturated image that we really would have, would have had to hit hard initially just to get it into a decent starting point. Now that starting point has been provided for us and not just on shot number one here, but on shot number two and shot number three as well. So that foundation is really critical if you wanna be able to grade effectively and efficiently. Setting up that overall color management, that's something that I'm gonna do regardless of the camera that I happen to be grading on a particular day. And there's one more thing that I want to do before we begin our shot level grading, and that's to establish some overall looks for our images. Now, in this case, we're dealing with images that sort of belong to two separate worlds. So shot number one is a particular environment and lighting scheme and subject. And shots two and three are really in their own environment and have their own lighting scheme and subject. So we're gonna do separate looks for each of these. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna utilize groups within Resolve here. So shot number one, I've actually already added to a group, but if I hadn't, I could right click and say add into a new group. I already have it here as a member of this group that I've labeled day. And if I go over here to my node graph, you can see uh, here at the group post clip that I've already pre-added uh, an instance of my DaVinci Wide Gamut 2383 LED, which is going to give me some film print character on my image. And if I turn this on, this is just going to give me some of that character right out of the box before I even begin grading the individual shot. So that's gonna be my look for this first shot, and then we're gonna begin grading it in just a moment. Now let's look at shots two and three and look at what's going on in their group post clip. I've selected a different look for these two shots because as we said, they're living in their own world. So in this case, I've selected four elements from my Voyager LUT pack. And if I turn these all on, you're gonna see that I'm getting some contrast ratio and I'm getting some color separation and a sort of remapping of my color palette and my densities, just a better creative starting point for when I begin grading these shots in just a moment. So. Template node tree, color management, overall looks. We've now got an awesome foundation to begin grading these shots. That's what I wanna do next. Let's have some fun. So let's go over here to shot number one, and I'm gonna work my way through this template node graph in the way that I always do when I'm grading, regardless of the material, starting with exposure. So I'm gonna to go to my offset here, and because this image is a little bit more open and uh, I wanna kinda of pull it in, I'm gonna pull this offset to the left, and what I'll often do at the beginning of this process is go way crazy far with it, just to see what's in there, to see what was recorded, what was captured. And I'm impressed to see when I look at this that that sky actually held. There's actually information up there in the sky. Now, the contrast, the dynamic range between that sky and the street down below and our subject when we see her in just a moment, that contrast ratio is huge. That dynamic range is massive. So I'm not necessarily gonna try to 
bring in that sky to somehow be right next to the exposure level of my subject, but it is good for me to know that there's nothing clipped in that sky, so I can set the exposure wherever I want. It's just a matter of what I wanna see and of course what my client would wanna see. So in this case, I'm gonna optimize my offset for my subject here, and we're gonna say something like that. Let's see how that feels at the head of the shot. That's really nice. We're just bringing things in a little bit without letting them get too crushed or crunchy. Uh, I'm gonna skip over my contrast ratio node. I feel really good about my contrast ratio in this case and go right to my balance where I can see, especially when I land on my subject here, that I might be biased a little bit uh, kind of toward magenta or blue. So I'm just gonna move things over here to the left. I'm, I've got one eye kind of on my vector scope and one eye on my image as I do this. And if I go before and after, I think that's a nice adjustment. I'm just kind of biasing things a little bit more toward the neutral or cool side in terms of relationship to the skin tone line compared to where we were a moment ago. Maybe I don't even need to go quite that far. You can see just how touchy these adjustments can be when you're starting with a pretty well shot image in the first place. Little nudges when you're working color managed on good material can go a super long way. So that balance feels really good to me as we've got it now. Let's go a little bit further maybe. Something like that. And the only other thing that I wanna do here, well, two more things that I wanna do here on this shot. The next thing I wanna do is stabilize a little bit. So I'm gonna go over here to my tracking panel and go to the stabilizer like so. And I'm gonna set my strength kind of low, like maybe to a 0.4 or so, because I don't wanna somehow like iron out all of this camera motion that I see. I just wanna smooth it out a little bit. So by setting that strength lower, it's gonna let more of the original camera motion pass through. I'm gonna let it analyze there and let's just see how this feels once it's finished. I'm gonna watch it loop back around. That's really nice. We've still got that organic camera motion in the shot. It's just tamed in and tamped down ever so slightly by the stabilizer, okay? And the last thing that I wanna do here is I wanna introduce some filmic saturation. And I'm gonna do that using a different technique than just my saturation knob. I'm gonna go here to the lower section of my node graph, right click on node number four and set my color space to HSV. Then I'm gonna set my channels so that I only have channel two enabled. Channels one and three are gonna be turned off. That means that I'm now operating on channel two or the S channel of my HSV color space. S in HSV stands for saturation. So now I can work my gamma and my gain and in doing so add saturation to this image. So I'm just kind of turn that gamma to the right. And really the test here is gonna be how it feels on my subject. That's still feeling really good. I just wanna be mindful that I'm not going too far with my saturation and making your skin tone look unnatural. Her skin tone's already lovely uh, right where it started, so I don't wanna mess with it too much. But if we go off and then on, that's feeling really good to me. That's giving me a nice pop of kind of filmic color there using that uh, HSV trick that I love to use. So I'm feeling really good about that shot. That's a great start there. Let's look at shots two and three now. Shot number two, we're gonna work the same way. Let's go to our offset, open up that exposure a little bit. I know it's night, I know it's available light, but I wanna make sure that I can see my, sub, my uh, subject reasonably well. Next, let's go to my contrast ratio, maybe soften that out ever so slightly. That's feeling really good there. And then for my balance, I like where my color balance is sitting currently, but I'm just gonna go to the ball and nudge things around and see if I can't get a little more color separation or a little bit better feeling skin than I had a moment ago. Maybe I won't be able to, but I always like to give it a try. So let's go off and then on, off and then on. That's almost too subtle to spot, but I do think it's a nice improvement, especially for these moments in the shot where she's really being washed with that warm light like we have here. This is giving me just a little splash of like a cool counterpoint when I turn it on. So here's before and there's after. And honestly, I got nothing else to say about this shot. I think it looks really great. I'm really impressed when I look at the way that this sensor is handling skin tone in terms of like the color and the texture there. That's feeling really good. So the combo of good cinematography, uh, good lens, whatever was put in front of the camera and the camera itself is netting a really strong image that with just a little bit of color grading is landing in a really good spot here. Let's move on to shot number three here, the last shot in our timeline. I love this shot. That feels really, really cool. I love how our hero is kind of coming into the light and going out of it. And the design of the whole shot feels really nice. I love the diverse color palette. So I don't have a ton to say here. I'm just, again, going to kind of take each of these nodes for a spin and see if I can't optimize a little bit. Maybe open up that exposure a little bit. Maybe bring in this contrast ratio a hair. 
If I do that, probably what I'll do is bring my pivot all the way to a one so that I'm kind of working a uh, lift style adjustment. And in that sense, I'm just gonna ever so slightly open up that contrast just to see a little bit more into those shadows. And I feel like I like that, but I now wanna go back to my exposure and I wonder if it wouldn't be better just to go back to right where it started. So something like that is where I've netted out. I've actually ended up trimming a little bit of exposure, but I've got even kind of like more printy shadows happening now. And I think that feels really nice. And honestly, I don't have much else to say about this shot. The only other thing that I would like to do, just a subtle enhancement, I'm gonna do a new circular power window down here in the lower section of my node graph. Set my aspect to 100 so that I essentially have a horizontal grad. Go nice and soft, tilt down, and I just wanna knock things down in this lower portion of the frame. Let's rotate a little bit. So that I'm guiding the eye a bit more strongly up toward our subject. And I'm gonna work my gain wheel in this case, just to tame those things in. And if we were to turn this overlay off here and play through, you would never know that that adjustment was there unless I showed you what it looked like before. It's just a nice way of sort of removing a distraction and guiding the eye toward where we want it to go, which of course is up here uh, to this nice pool of light that our hero is moving into and then uh, back out of. And that's really all I have to say about that shot. Maybe we could give that same saturation trick a try that we did on shot number one. So we're gonna go HSV, channel two only. And let's just see what we can do here. Maybe spin that now a little bit to the right. Ooh, that feels good. That feels good. I'm glad we gave this a try. Check this out. So here's our before and our after. I can kind of hit it harder and get away with it here because we're so wide and we're not seeing, we're only seeing a little nibble of skin tone. So I'm hitting that harder than I was in our first shot. And I think I'm totally getting away with it. And I'm glad I gave it a try because I do feel like it's enhancing that really nice color palette that we already had innate in this shot. So I hope this, this kind of gives you a sense for like how I would work with this material and for how easily and nicely it's coming into a grading environment when we put the proper foundation in place that I always emphasize in my grading practice, that good color management, good template node tree, a good look that supports your creative intent, of course, the client's creative intent for the material. And with those pieces in place, I'm really, really impressed with what I'm seeing uh, in this material, especially in terms of color fidelity, dynamic range, noise, skin tone reproduction, all those things that I'm really sensitive to uh, in my color grading practice uh, are feeling really, really good with this material uh, as I'm looking at it here today. So I hope that's a helpful kind of walkthrough for how this material comes in to resolve, how I initially set it up, and then how I would work with it creatively as a professional colorist.